Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today we are going to be doing the side-by-side -side benchmark comparison between the Galaxy SA Pluses at Full HD versus QHD. So, just so we can see, the only difference between these two is 1080p versus 1440p. So that is going to be the only difference between the two. Uh, now when we go to these benchmarks, they still don't know what product this is. It is still before the actual launch date, so that's obviously why. But uh, these are the Snapdragon 835 version. We do have the Exynos version, of course, that's still pre-production model, and we did do that benchmark test beforehand uh, about two weeks ago. So if you want to check that one out, go ahead and check that one out. However, uh, we are not going to do the full comparison of the Exynos versus Snapdragon till we get the final software to make it a fair comparison. And when that happens, you can make sure to subscribe to check back for the Snapdragon versus Exynos final build versions. That being said, let's start off. So these are the benchmarks we're going to be going over. Uh, CPU Z, just to, uh, as we just went through, we're going to be going over Geekbench, 3D Mark, uh, so processor, graphics, and then full test with Intuitu. All right, so let's see if uh, Geekbench will load. It's been having some issues since we launched it the first time. So if it doesn't load, we do already have it in the gallery. So let's just do that. So with Geekbench, uh, these were the results. As you can see, very minimal difference between the two uh, when it came to this test, simply for the fact that you had almost identical single core and multi core. So not too much of a difference when it comes to this. Uh, for the single core, you could see it does rank above the Exynos versions from last year, which were the top ranking for the single core processor um, on the market last year. Overall, still does a really good job in terms of it, but not where we would like to see, I would say, total. I would want to see more of a 2000 uh, benchmark test. Um, and for the multi-core, again, ranking well over them, but I want to say the Exynos pre-production model got around higher than that. I don't have it off the top of my head, and we did erase that, so I would have to look at the old video, but if I'm not mistaken, it did rank above that. And then we go to the score uh, for the graphics test. And this is where you really see the difference between the two. Because this one got well below uh, this one. And that is simply because of the fact that you had a, um, a version of the phone that's entirely different. So with that, you had a 3500 test uh, versus a 2175. And simply because 1080p, obviously, it's going to perform much better at handling that than it performed at handling uh, the 1440p. Now, that being said, um, I don't know why my list went. Uh, let me try going back to that. But uh, this one, because of its impressive score of 3527, it actually ranks above every device, including even the iPad Pro. Uh, and uh, not the Android TV, of course, because that's still the king, uh, which I'm glad because that's where I do all my gaming on. But this one ranks above the iPad Pro and beating out every device from last year. Whereas this one beats out uh, only, it actually scored lower, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. 2175 so it actually scored lower than most of the phones from last year and again this is because of the higher resolution um, so I'm not sure how these tests are typically done on other devices but 2175 puts it right here above the Moto Z and above the Note 7, iPhone 7 Plus, S7 uh, but there are still other ones ranked better than it so you have to keep that in mind with the 1080p score it's much better however when you're putting it to 1440p it will slow down your device as you can see because of these results so i really like that that uh, of course at that kind of speed at 1080p i feel like i'm going to do that since i game a lot i'm going to do this uh, so i will get no lag and finally we have n22 
So uh, for the Intuitu uh, test, uh, we saw again another uh, difference. Um, a thousand off, so not too much of a difference, but these scored below the Exynos version. By the way, the Snapdragons destroyed the graphics uh, on the Exynos version. So these have a much better graphics uh, as according to benchmarks. However, in terms of the ranking, the uh, Exynos version uh, pre-production model, keep in mind, ranked in between the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. This one uh, on the 1080p side did beat out every Android phone in the market, but it still did not score exactly where we wanted it to. Of course, uh, scoring higher uh, in the 17 to 1800s. It did score in the high 16s, but still not as what we expected. And compared to the 3T, again, it did not score, again, compared to what we expected. It scored under the 3T if you're talking about the uh, QHD display. So uh, definitely lower, uh, and I'm assuming it's going to be on the same things. Um, it tends to always win out on the multi-core versus an iPhone 7, but when you're talking about the RAM test, the CPU test, the UX test, it's going to generally do better on the iPhone compared to the uh, X, or sorry, the Snapdragon version of this phone. So that being said, from the benchmark test results, we can say that in Geekbench, I believe, I don't remember off the top of my head, but um, that the Exynos version did better than Geekbench. The Snapdragon version definitely did better in the graphics processing on here, and the uh, N22 definitely did lower. So the overall benchmarks seem to uh, imply that the Exynos is better. However, the graphics uh, is definitely leaning towards the Snapdragon version. And if you want it at optimal performance, you do want it at a 1080p display versus a 1440p display. Alright guys, hopefully this video did help you out. As I did say, we do have the Exynos pre-production benchmark test on our channel. And make sure to check out all of our other videos as we have the most coverage on the Galaxy S8 on YouTube. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y. The YouTube Tech Guy.